Hi everyone. In this brief video tutorial, we'll be talking about an introductory SLRM scheduling topic. We'll be talking about creating and submitting job arrays. Um, specifically, we'll be talking about our systems at the Minnesota Supercomputing Institute today. You may be wondering, what is a job array and when would I like to use one? So first, we'd like to briefly talk about why and when you may want to submit your jobs as an array on our systems here at MSI. This is not going to be an exhaustive list. It's just some suggestions to get you thinking about when it might be ideal for you to use these. One um, perhaps easiest example for when to use a job array is that your research analyses, your workflow contains many small, very chunkable tasks that can be run both independently and simultaneously. They do not depend on each other. Um, and the order that they run does not particularly matter, for instance. Similarly and analogously, it may be that you have some collection of input files um, that are all analyzed in the same or highly similar ways. For instance, you could have multiple sequence data um, in bio biology or biomedical sciences, um, or you can have a lot of, say, output from experiments um, in a chemistry or physics setting that all need to be analyzed using the same type of software and in the same uh, research workflow. There are a couple major limitations you should keep in mind before starting uh, into and submitting a job array. First of all, on MSI systems, this is not a SLRM limitation, but an MSI limitation, there's a hard per user limit on array jobs. Um, you are only allowed per user to submit 2,000 element arrays, um, where each of these elements counts as an individual job on your user account. And the other things you should keep in mind is that you should think about what resource allocations you want and need for each array element. We'll talk more about resources in a little bit, but that is a major thing that you might want to keep in mind when submitting your array in terms of the total resources that you'll need to do all of your analyses. So let's talk about some basic array options. And we'll do that using a sample script that you could theoretically submit to Slurm. First, we'll talk about the options and then we'll look at the script together. So simply a job array will automate submissions for you to Slurm of multiple copies of a single template job. You will edit one template and the um, Slurm will create, create and submit multiple jobs for you. To do this, you will use the flag called array within whatever sbatch script um, you are creating for your analyses. Um, each array element is assigned some index. This is an integer. It is an inclusive integer if you include many. So for instance, the flag array equals 0 through 10 will submit 11 jobs numbered 0 through 10 inclusively. Um, this does not have to be a sequence. You can separate things with commas. It does not have to be consecutive either. You could theoretically write, say, 0 through 5, comma, 8 through 10, and it will only create those integer indices for you. You can then reference this array index, what I just discussed, within your job script at any point using an environmental variable. Um, like all environmental variables, this is preceded with a dollar sign. In this case, it's called slurm array task ID with underscores. If you use arrays in PBS before we transition to Slurm, uh, the PBS equivalent you may recall or have used it was PBS underscore array ID. Um, one thing that becomes a little bit confusing uh, since our move to Slurm, um, this task ID is not the same as tasks in Slurm. So when you specify n tasks, for instance, if you're talking about um, your overall job allocations, this is not the same type of task is not the same terminology within Slurm. So just keep that in mind if you're going to be using this environmental variable. OK, here is a brief and small sample array script. So I've highlighted in red um, the array specific um, flags. So there's a whole bunch of other stuff in here that is fairly standard. Um, but you notice here that I am creating a 16, array, uh, 16 job array numbered 1 through 16. I have two blocks of code um, after this initial sbatch block. The first one just echoes um, this phrase, currently running array index. And it tells you, or it tells the terminal in this case, um, what array task ID it is currently running. And after that is where the analyses actually take place. The way this code is working is that it changes directory to some program directory. And it calls some program named program.exe. It takes in some input. 
with a task ID and it outputs some output with that same task ID. If you saved the above script as myjob.sh, you would just create the array simply using the sbatch uh, command, sbatch myjob.sh. This will create and submit 16 identical jobs to Slurm. All of them will run program.exe, and each one will individually run on, say, input 1, input 2, et cetera, et cetera, up to input 16. And they will all output to output 1, output 2, output 16. And those numbers are created and defined by the array flag at the beginning of this script. Some quick basics of array uh, slash array job management. If you're used to looking at SQ at your jobs, if you submit an array, things will look a little bit different. Arrays in SQ appear as just one job ID. In this example screenshot I have up there, it is the job ID 58. The array indices um, come after an underscore and are in square brackets. Um, this is an example of non-sequential arrays. In this case, I have an array with the indices 6 through 10 and also 12. You can always cancel the entire array just by using the following command, s cancel and 58, which is the whole job ID. But you could also cancel just one of the individual array jobs using its index. One thing to really keep in mind, and I've already mentioned this, is that each array job is just a copy of whatever your original template script is. This means whenever you want to make resource requests, and when you're thinking about your resource requests to Slurm, in your template, so for instance, the memory you're calling, the number of tasks you're requesting, um, the number, amount of wall time you want, these are for each job. They are not for the entire array. So keep that in mind when you're creating your um, template script, um, because that can, of course, impact how long it takes um, for things to be submitted and to run on Slurm. There are some other options you can submit to SBatch. I'll just go over a couple of them right now. You can always limit the number of tasks that run at once. For instance, if they're all very memory intensive, you may want to do that for a reason, whatever reason. Um, you can you, um, do that, limit this by using the um, percent operator. For instance, the flag array equals 1 through 16 percent 4. We'll again create and submit 16 jobs, as we've already discussed, but we'll only submit and run four of them at once. You can also name your output and error files um, using the output and error flags to SBatch um, using percent %a, either capitalized or lowercase for either the job ID or the task ID. Um, so for instance, if you had the output flag equals array um, and per, uh, percent uppercase a and then percent lowercase a, it will create a different out file for each of your tasks um, using this kind of nomenclature here. So some real quick final thoughts in this brief tutorial. One of them is that scheduler management, any kind of scheduler management, in this case we're talking about Slurm, will take HPC resources. Um, if your jobs are really quick and simple, for instance, if each of your jobs, uh, each of your tasks really only takes 30 seconds to run, it may take actually more computing effort for Slurm to manage those jobs than to actually execute them. In other words, submitting the array won't actually submit you any, uh, save you any time. It can actually clog up the scheduler and slow things down. That means you should always be considering how arrays can best speed up your actual workflows. The easiest way to think about this as an example and mental exercise you should do is you should think about whether or not you should run an array with 5,000 one-step or one-run jobs, or if instead you should run 500 10-step or 10-run jobs. Often, the latter will actually be more efficient for both you and for Slurm generally. Of course, this particular example is a little strange because our user limits are 2,000 um, jobs, but you can still make an analogous uh, mental exercise with that limitation in mind. If you ever need more help, feel free to contact us um, at MSI. We are always here for both more information and support. Um, and good luck with your research and your analyses going forward.